Hello once again, this is episode 69 of my This and That series and you are looking at the skeletal remains of Tubal Cain. I just got back last month from Florida. I went to the flywheeler and had a great time. Lost a lot of weight during that trip so there's very little likelihood that I can take, stand the rigors of traveling to go to the bash. So I think that's out. I really wish I could be there because I had such a wonderful time at the Flywheelers and uh, thanks to all of you people that came there to see me and uh, Adam and some of the other creators. I do not have a whole lot of video on that. I just have a couple clips. I decided not to take videos when I go to events because then I spend the day looking through a viewfinder. I do have stills of some of the people I met at the end so check that out. Now in this video I have a lot to cover an awful lot of viewer appreciation gifts, but let me start out by saying that I just recently completed a four-part video on this little South Bend jig to grind tool bits. So check those out, if you will, and at that time I made an announcement that there are no drawings, no blueprints, no dimensioned uh, sheets at all on that, but now there are four people volunteered to make blueprints for me and I've got some beautiful ones here by different draftsmen and this one even has three sheets so look down in the description and I'll put a link for the website called My Heap. You've probably seen it before but all those blueprints are available there for you to look at and or download. So let's get started on some of the things I want to show you. In Florida, I had a nice conversation with some great people, specifically Amos DeCarmo and his family, and one of his daughters, and I think I got her card here, but you know, I, I forget everything, but they gave me this really neat little sign, and it changes colors, can be taken apart real quickly. Mr. Pete, also known as Tubalcane, your YouTube shop teacher, isn't that awesome? So thank you to that family and th that came in this box along with this thing has a remote control too you change the colors and just do all kinds of awesome things with it but then a couple weeks later I got another box from the same family thank you to them and in that uh, box there are two coffee cups there's still another one over here Tubalcane uh, your YouTube shop teacher so you'll see me drinking that out of that pretty soon and also they sent me several Christian books that I hope I can get read here before uh, summer sets and I don't do much reading in the in the summer so thank you to those people and speaking of coffee I got a Dunkin Donuts gift card from one Mr. Len Powell so thank you Len there's a donut shop exactly one and two tenths miles from my house and this coffee at Dunkin Donut is far better than uh, Starbucks in my opinion of course humble do you remember this little shadow box from a recent video and in that video I talked to you about am I a hoarder a collector or an accumulator well most people said that I am definitely not a hoarder because it's not messy enough. I am not a collector really because I do not categorize things, although this is a bit of a collection here really, isn't it? But I wouldn't call my other things. So people agreed that I am an accumulator because I have a large quantity of stuff that, and some of which is quite valuable and by the way I'm selling off a lot of it. But I recently got a video from someone that said you are neither of the three. You are a curator. And I think that's really a pretty good term because I'm taking good care of all of this stuff and it will be passed on to other people. It will not be thrown away. So I need to finish this up. All these items have to be wired to the back because they'll fall off. That's why I have it leaning a little bit. But when I was in Florida, I went into an exhibit and there was a frame set. There's quite a glare on there of calipers and dividers of all kinds. I thought, well then I'm not crazy. Other people display their tools as well. Now let me cut away to another video clip from the Florida Flywheelers. I went in one of the exhibit buildings and I 
film this old drill press, a really, really, you know, 100 year old drill, drill press, get a load of the holes pecked in the table. And it didn't come from a school. No, no audio in this clip. Don't do this to your drill press table. Wow, what did you think about that drill press? Well, anyway, I recently got this in the mail from one Mr. Ted Farwell in Kansas. So this is an older Sterrett chart, decimal equivalent, and uh, all good things like that. Those companies like Sterrett and Brown and Sharp used to put out a lot of giveaways like this. A salesman would hand you if you were, if he came to visit you. At a recent auction, in a box of junk, were these two tools. Obviously, these were made in a school shop out of soft steel. Whoever did this, about 70 miles from my house, did a nice job on that little tack hammer. And also, I made something like this, or had the kids make it in class. I call it a step exercise because they, they made different steps, all different dimen dimensions, and they had tolerances on each one of those. And here's a, a neural on that as well. Now, teachers are criticized greatly for having the kids make useless projects. Well, and you can see these never got used, but that's the nature of a teaching shop. Some of the projects are meant to teach you things and really aren't that useful, and it's very hard to get kids to be interested in something like this, especially if they've been playing on the commuter, computer. So this is probably pretty mundane, but uh, think of a, a math class. All of the work at the end of the hour is crumpled up and thrown in the wastebasket. We've talked about these little spill-proof oil containers for cutting oil and whatnot, and I have a bunch of examples of those that uh, people made for me. And just the other day in the mail, here came another pair of these, and these are from Steve Mitchell in Michigan. Thank you, Steve. And <clears throat> I had a laugh. <clears throat> it's marked Machinist Cutting Oil Can Spill Minimizer. Because they can spill a little bit if they tip all the way over. Depends on how much oil is in them when they tip. Tubal cane, Mr. Pete, and so on. And then on the top, he had a sticker. This one's for Tap Magic. And the other one had uh, Rapid Tap on it, but I would rather have regular cutting oil in there, so... My wife made that tag for me, and these come apart real easily for cleaning, so it's pretty awesome. And you can see this is made with, I believe, a conduit fitting. So that's pretty awesome. I got a bunch of stickers sent to me, and some of these I got from people in Florida. Honeybees. Now, I met this character down in Florida, Jimmy. I don't know what his last name is. He does have a channel, and you might see him in some pictures that I will be showing you later on. Well, matter of fact, this is Jimmy, knoxmakers.org. And what do we have here? My little mule. That's also Knox machining, Jimmy. You know, American Rotary is a great company. I think you're familiar with their products, and we all got a t-shirt from them. You might see me wearing it sometime. And I met Winky from Winky's Workshop. I'm sure you have watched him. We talked for a long time and had a lot of fun. Hello, Winky, if you're watching. Let me cut away again real quickly to my Florida footage where I took just a short video of an old Elgin lathe. Remember Elgin lathes were about like the uh, the Hardin's lathe. So I, I took just a little clip out of that. I, it is not a machine that is in active use, but nevertheless worth a quick look. Here's a little cataract lathe, predecessor to Hardin's.
Thank you to Brian Lake, and he's in Kelowna, Illinois. That's only about 80 miles or 100 miles from my house. And he sent me several things, and thank you, Brian. One is a Sterrett catalog, a very old one. I don't see the number on here, but I think I, I, I found the date here was 19... It's number 26. I believe it's 1935. Very interesting to look through these old catalogs. Also, he sent me some sperm oil. Now, this is not available anymore. Brownells used to sell it. But it has many uses, rust proofing, uh, you can use it on guns or tools or for treating metal. I've never seen any before. I think it was also used in lamps. You can look at that if you want. So I thought that was pretty interesting, didn't you? Okay, I loosened the lid because I wanted to smell it, but I see it's got another seal right here. But it has a strong odor. I mean, that is, I can smell the contents. And it smells really a lot more like linseed oil, I think, than uh, any other, anything else that I can compare it to. The whales are endangered, so we, there will be no more of this, but there are probably plenty of synthetic substitutes. Len Powell sent me a nice little box of assorted tools, and he's from Maryland. A couple of nice cutters here, brand new with one inch bore, which will fit my clausing. Whole bag of bumpers. Sometimes I make something where I need bumpers, so he must remember that from a video. And a bag full of toggle switches. Lifetime supply for me, of course. And then we got what here? About eight or nine Ericsson collets. Now I do not have the holder for that, but I think I could buy one with an R8 shank on it or something like that. So thank you, Len, for some real neat items. My neighbor Richard loaned me this really neat catalog from 1925, and it's marked H. Shannon Company. Very similar, so it started in 1875, very similar to McMaster Carr, and he was even wondering if this might be a predecessor to McMaster because it's... Uh, out of Chicago. But in here is just really neat pictures. You know, there's all of your stereo tools and a lot of the cuts in here you will recognize. Combination squares, there's hit and miss engines in here, a lot of blacksmithing, hardware of all kinds, plumbing, machinery. That almost looks like a Haasfield bender. So that's pretty awesome, just for the fun of looking through it. And the same neighbor, Richard, collects the Brownells catalogs. And they're out of Iowa. This is a 10-year-old one, but if you get a chance to uh, read through one of these, you might like it because they're just an awful lot of tools because every gunsmith probably is basically a machinist. I think they're a little bit pricey, but they also have a website, so check that out. Thanks, Richard. I've made an awful lot of videos lately. Not all of them have been published, but if you're interested in the South Bend grinding jig, there are the four parts and the numbers. Some are not on the internet yet, and then a lot of related videos coming as well about grinding and angles and addressing the wheels and things like that. So keep your eyes open for that. You need to search weekly for my video, so just search Tubal Cain because I don't think that most of you are getting the notifications, but I'm putting out videos every week. I'm kind of wrapping up the video right now. Thank you to all you guys down in Florida that were good to me. A special thanks to Jim Bollinger who came to the motel and kind of rescued me and let me follow him out to the flywheelers because we were without internet service for four days down there because the railroad cut through the cables near Chicago. So I was lost and we had no decent road map. So Jim is really good. He babies me. And thank you for that. And thank you to the people at Flywheelers who uh, gave us uh, our carts to drive, free admission, and were really, really good to us. So go to their website and make sure you go to the Flywheelers some year. 
if you can because it is an awesome, awesome event. You need two or three days to cover it all. So I'll see you in the next video. Stand by for some still pictures and there may be even some video clips left. Depends on what I find uh, in my computer. <laughs> I forget pretty fast. So see you guys next time. Is it recording? It should. Let's go. Alright guys, we're going to come your way. Come on, puppy. Come on, puppy. Right, little Adam Booth magic going on right here. <laughs> mm. And believe me, you can't smell it. Mm, but it smells even better than it tastes. That one's going to be for the cows there. No, it's not. I'm going to wash it up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Woo Look at that. Yes. You can feel the heat coming off of that thing. Oh, I'm gonna get you a picture of it.